Hi, hello, welcome back to another function. This is Krish Bhavna. If you are for the first time, I am a computer science student at University of Illinois at Chicago and I am minoring in entrepreneurship. Welcome back to the channel. So today I am going to talk about the assembly language and this is going to be like an introductory video to anybody who don't know what assembly language is. So firstly, why am I doing this? So let's get started with why am I doing this and how I started this. So usually so many people ask me to do like a coding series in my YouTube channel like C++ or C or Java but somehow I wanted to take up a new challenge so that's the reason I have taken up this project. So this one I'm doing it as a micro project for my mission organization class and therefore I've decided to post it here so more number of people can watch it. So there are few rules in this. Number one, because I'm also a beginner, I'm learning and I'm making these videos. So there might be few mistakes. So just if you see any, I will double check my sources. But still, if you see any, just comment down below. And number two, of course, it's not going to be my Wednesday content. The Wednesday content is still going to be going on. This is going to be like my Saturdays where I want to upload like six to seven episodes, if I'm not wrong, where I want to talk about assembly language, computer architecture, like what happens behind the scenes for after the code. So now let's get started. So firstly, what language will I be focused on? I'll be focused on x86-64. It's an assembly language. So what is an assembly language? Assembly language is an abstraction from the machine language. So what is machine language? Machine language is nothing but ones and zeros. So anything or any code that we write or anything that we do is being stored in computer as ones and zeros to anybody who don't know. So that's the reason assembly code is a very crucial thing. For example, imagine you're writing or for example, imagine you're actually using an application and anything behind the application is code. So for suppose the application that you're using requires a C program. So for example, when you hit compile, it runs and it generates an assembly code in the middle and that assembly code is an intermediate language which is also known as like a lower level language to anybody who's go for the google terms uh, so that plays like a basic middleman role which is like not a high level programming language which is not a medium level programming language but with the symbols uh, like rbx or like rax you can understand what is actually happening in that code so you can know the memory locations you can know like the symbolic meanings and you can know the architecture of the program with the assembly language before giving an example i want to talk about three important key terms in the assembly language the first one is the main memory the main memory is nothing but the random access memory which is also known as the ram and the second one is cache so what is cache cache is the most expensive memory on your uh, computer for example if you want to get that immediate access to anything cache plays a very quick role but today we're not talking a lot about cache or the ram today we'll be talking about another important thing they are nothing but registers so what are registers registers are nothing but an internal cpu new memory that permits efficient implementation of instructions so why is this guy actually talking about all these weird terms like memory cache and then registers so now let me show you an assembly code so if you observe uh, the code the assembly code which is on the screen right now there are a few important details the first one is the angled brackets in the angled brackets you can find the function names so there's main as you know main is where you call all the functions that you want to write or basic variable declarations or the entire setup uh, and then you call your functions so here if you observe another thing there are a few important details one is those big numbers like 000 and then after some certain zeros you get like 408 so that is the address of where your uh, code is being like stored for example where is this function being stored it is being stored at that certain address and then if you dive in a little bit more for every single line it is going sequentially so let's talk about the sequence but before that let's see line by line so the first line said 400 e8 which is basically like an address of where it is being stored and then we have the hexa values 4883 ec08 and then we have the assembly chunk let's talk about the assembly chunk in the later on videos but for now let's highly stick on to what this code is and how the instructions work and now if you observe something over here as i told you before it's a sequential program it goes line by line and where is this being stored this is where you will remember it 
the most favorite term registers as we discussed in the memory before we'll be using registers and for the registers we'll be especially using rip register instructor program so all the sequential layout will be happening because of the rip that rip holds whatever our sequence is at if we are at like a certain position imagine we are at 400 f6 then our rip holds that address that's how we know where the code is and how it is running so this is one of the very important details all the instructions on the assembly code side will be with the percentage sign so any important detail like percentage rcb or percentage racks everything all the special instructions will be having those uh, percentage signs so let's talk about the final topic for today which is the register access so in the register access there are few important details for now let's only stick on to the return value which is also known as the racks so for the racks if you observe something the return value which is above 31 bits which means from 32 bits to 63 bits will be stored in racks anything between 15 to 31 can either be stored in ax or ex or anything between 0 to 7 can be stored in al and from 7 to 15 can be stored in ah so depending on how much memory you want it will be stored in different positions if you are using the entire 64 bit i mean uh, the first number of the first number is always going to represent the sign positive or negative so the remaining 63 bits it's going to be racks if anything else it's going to be either al or ex or x or h so this is not something which you have to memorize you can find these documents anywhere but just have an understanding of how register access work if certain memory it goes over here like why does it go over here because it needs its space and to allocate all the memory perfectly we need to have a perfect assignment so that's register access i tried to be as simple as possible so everybody can understand and i really didn't want to dig deep confuse everybody on the first lecture itself so i really hope you enjoyed this video so please stay tuned wednesday is coming which means the fun content is going to be up so until then signing off this is krish bhavna and i really hope you like the video please do subscribe to this channel and also please hit the like and also please do comment and i'll see you all this wednesday signing off this is krish bhavna